Now, here's a story. Interesting. There was an article that wanted to, a scientific article published in a British journal that said, when consumers in Canada were given full information, they, choose to, they chose to eat the genetically engineered corn. It never mentioned this one little fact that above the non-GMO corn was a sign that said, would you eat wormy sweet corn? This was designed by a pro-GMO person. It was rigged research designed to give the wrong impression, designed to give the impression that people, are, that people prefer eating GMO corn. And not only did they say, would you eat wormy sweet corn, they listed all of the pesticides and herbicides that were used on the wormy sweet corn. And then the, the GMO corn had no sign over it. And the scientist doing this objective research, he saw someone leave the store with the natural sweet corn and ran up to them and convinced them that they made the wrong decisions. Oh, okay, next time I'll try the GMO corn. This was how he conducted. And never mentioned any of this in the peer-reviewed journal. And there was a pro-GMO British uh, uh, scientific journal. How do we know? Because it won award as the, one of the best articles of the year. And then when all of this came out in a book, the fact that there was the would you eat wormy sweet corn, it was actually published in a book by a reporter with the picture of the sign and a description of how the author had tried to had actually run up to people to try and convince them. The journal did not retract the paper or the award. It tells you that they're basically being controlled by the biotech industry. Well, we'll get to that. So part of the solution is educating people about the health dangers and shifting to non-GMO, but non-GMO is not good enough, organic, because of the Roundup sprayed on the non-GMO. And tomorrow, what I'm going to speak on is a bigger danger, an existential threat to the whole planet from GMOs, which you don't want to miss that, because that, that, that is something that is so intense and so important that I think everyone needs to hear about this all over the world, and there are solutions that we need to develop for that, too. So he, there was a study done in 1996 by Monsanto. You don't have to read the, the screen. It's too much. Um, 1996, Journal of Nutrition. Monsanto did one scientific study on GMO soy. And basically, the title was that there's no difference. It's substantially equivalent, GM and non-GM soy. And that was all they put out in 1996. And people were eating it in 1997. Nothing else. It has been described as the model of how you do research to avoid finding problems. They diluted their GM soy tenfold. They used too much protein so that there wouldn't be any results in the rats from protein deficiency. Here's an example of how they did their work. When you're doing side-by-side -side comparisons for content, you know, what's the composition? You go into the same climate, the same geography, you, you have a line in the field, one side's GMO, one side's non-GMO, there's enough separation distance, so there's no contamination, but you hold all of the other factors, all the other variables constant, so you're just looking at the only difference, not weather, not location, and then you'll have statistical significance. You lower the noise. So, what did Monsanto do? They had six different side-by-side -side studies all over the country, and then they pooled all of the data. By pooling all of the data, they eliminate the statistical significance of almost anything that's not extreme. And they still had at some extreme outliers, like reduced or increased trypsin inhibitor, which is an allergen, and some other things. And Barbara Keeler, who was an investigative reporter and medical writer, contacted the Journal of Nutrition and found that Monsanto had submitted data that never made it into the paper. 
and was able to find the data where they did actually side-by-side -side comparisons in Puerto Rico. And they found that there was, with cooked GM soy, as much as a seven-fold increase in trypsin inhibitor. Trypsin inhibitor inhibits trypsin, which breaks down protein. If you have proteins lasting longer in your gut, they have a greater capacity to create allergic reactions. It may be why, we don't know, in the five years after GM soy was introduced, peanut allergies doubled. Because if you're not able to break down the peanut protein, you may get an allergic reaction. There's also a cross-reactivity between soy and peanuts that might have been enhanced in the GM version. We don't know. But trypsin inhibitor, being in such high levels, could be a disaster for the entire digestive tract and immune system. And that information was hidden. It was in the archives of the journal, never published. She found it, and she published it with Mark LaPay in the Los Angeles Times, along with the fact that there was an anti-nutrient that was doubled something that blocks the absorption of other nutrients, a reduction in protein, a reduction in other key elements of nutrition. And why were these left out? Because remember, the name of the study was that they are substantially equivalent. If this information had been put into the article, it would have proven the opposite. And maybe the soy would never have been introduced. The only reason they got the soy approved is because they used rigged research. When they tested the feed, they created Roundup Ready Soy designed to be sprayed with Roundup. They never sprayed it with Roundup before they fed it to animals. No one grows Roundup Ready Soy and doesn't spray it with Roundup. That's why you grow it. And originally it was being sprayed twice. Now it's being sprayed four times in some places. Tenfold number amount of glyphosate or Roundup. And they never even sprayed it. It was, it was described as a typical way, a perfect example of what you do in order, using the wrong statistical methods, the wrong controls, the wrong methods, in order to avoid finding problems. And this was the study upon which GMO soy was introduced to our food supply. Now, Mark LePay, the co-author of that letter, he wrote a book called Against the Grain. And while it was waiting for publication, Monsanto was concerned that he had heard that he had blown the whistle on the fact that their genetically modified soy had a lower amount of phytoestrogens, which are good for the heart. So they wrote a, they wrote a nasty letter asking him, basically demanding that he not publish the book. And then they said in a sentence, and there's no difference in the phytoestrogens level. Now, Mark had no idea why. So I guess, well, let's check it. It was like they tipped their hand. They never realized that Mark had not tested for phytoestrogen levels, but when they wrote him the letter, he did. And sure enough, there was a lower level of phytoestrogen levels. So he was ready to publish that. And he had to, do, he had to not talk about it for a while while it was waiting to be published. So Monsanto used that period, did their own research, and immediately published their own study, which said there's so much variability in phytoestrogens, you can't even do a statistical analysis. So it came out before Mark's article came out, nullifying the results. But Mark realized that Monsanto went to the same laboratory that he went to, to do their study. So he went to that one guy who was the world's expert at extracting and testing for phytoestrogen levels. And he said, what gives? And the scientist said, yeah, Monsanto forced us to use an obsolete method of detection that was prone to variability. So they designed the study specifically to have no statistical results. They forced it out into the public domain. They never mentioned in their peer-reviewed journal that they had used the absolute, me absolute method. And the person at the laboratory was not allowed to publish anything saying that either. So this is exactly how they rig their research. So when you say, when you go and say, oh, tobacco says this, big tobacco says this, uh, drug companies say this, Monsanto says this, see, it's in black and white, it's actually published, it could be absolutely meaningless. And we'll explain a little bit how they do their work.